40 trillion kilometers from home. A 150,000 year ride in a space shuttle. And we've only just reached the first solar system after our own. Alpha Centauri. Not one, but three stars. They're spinning around each other, locked in a celestial standoff. Each star's gravity attracting the other, their insane orbital speed keeping them apart. Get between them, and we could be flung into the face of one of these stars. Vaporized, trillions of kilometers from home. So far, the kilometers are becoming meaningless. We're going to have to talk in light years. A beam of light takes one year to travel 10 trillion kilometers. So 40 trillion kilometers is four light years from home. It's crazy. Distances so vast, they're almost beyond comprehension. And exciting. Who knows what strange worlds lie ahead? What we'll discover when? If we reach the edge of the universe. Ten light years from Earth, the star Epsilon Eridani. What spectacular rings of dust and ice. And somewhere in there, planets forming out of the debris, being born before our eyes. Asteroids and comets everywhere. We could almost be looking at our own solar system billions of years ago, with comets delivering organic molecules, water to these young planets, kick-starting life just as they may have done on Earth. At the center of all this action, a star smaller than our sun. It's still in its infancy. Any life in this solar system would be primitive at best. There must be more mature, developed solar systems out here. But finding them is like looking for a needle in a cosmic haystack. Twenty light years from Earth. Star Gliese 581. It's about the same age as our sun. And orbiting it, this planet. It's just the right distance from its sun. Any closer and water would boil away. Any further, and it would freeze. Ideal conditions for life to have evolved. And if comets have struck, delivering water and organic materials, then life, complex beings like us, even civilizations like our own, could be down there right now. And if there are, even at this distance, they could be tuning into our TV signals, watching shows from 20 years ago. And here's your host, Joe Dapper. But until future generations can find a way of communicating over these vast distances, all we can do is speculate. Us and them, living parallel lives, unaware of each other's existence. Unless life has been and gone. That's the problem with comets. 
their creators and destroyers. As the dinosaurs found out the hard way 65 million years ago. This is the needle in the cosmic haystack, the closest we've come to a habitable solar system like our own. But it's a chance encounter. There could be hundreds, millions more solar systems like this out here, or none at all. This is vast. And look, it's the planet Bellerophon. So close to its own sun, it's a miracle it was discovered at all. Problem is, from Earth, we can't see planets this far out. They're obscured by the brilliance of their neighboring stars. But the planets have a minute gravitational pull on those stars. Measure these tiny movements trillions of kilometers away, and we can prove they exist. That's how we tracked down Bellerophon in the 1990s, opening the floodgates to the discovery of hundreds of other distant planets. 65 light years from Earth. Tune in on this bright star, and you'd pick up TV signals from Hitler's Berlin Olympics. Twin stars. It's Algol, the demon star, feared since ancient times on account of its sinister behavior. From Earth, it appears to blink as one star passes in front of the other. Up close, it's even stranger. One star has expanded into the gravitational pull of the other. It's being sucked towards it. Almost a hundred light years from home. Listen. One of the first ever radio broadcasts. Just a faint whisper. We appreciate it if anyone hearing this broadcast would communicate with us. We are very anxious to know how far the broadcast is reached. And then silence. From here on out, it's as if Earth never existed. Any aliens living beyond here will have no idea we're there. It feels like a lifetime ago we stood on that beach, looking up at the sky, wondering where and how we fitted in. It's time to appreciate the wonders we're seeing, not just for what they tell us about our own world, it's what they can tell us about the whole universe, its past and its future. Deep inside our galaxy, the Milky Way, a vast celestial library, each star a book with a story to tell. It's all here, waiting for us to lift the cover. The Seven Sisters, daughters of the ancient Greek god Atlas, transformed into stars to comfort their father as he held the heavens on his shoulders. And this giant, Betelgeuse. The brightest, biggest star we've seen so far. It's got to be at least 600 times wider than our own sun. Not a star. Not a planet. Not like anything we've ever seen. A ghostly spectre, more than 1300 light years from Earth. Orion's dark cloud. Dust and gas, so dense, it's shrouding us, shutting us off from the universe outside. 
There, deep inside, a ball of light, pulling the dust and gas towards it, heating up, merging into a ball of burning hot gas. Like a star, like our sun, in miniature. It's millions of degrees inside it, so hot it's beginning to trigger nuclear reactions, the kind that keep our sun shining. Making energy, radiation, light. A star is being born. Or rather, stars. Orion's dark cloud is a vast star factory. We're witnessing the birth of the future universe. We've come to expect hostile horrors, but we're discovering one of the universe's greatest creative wonders, star birth. Perhaps we spoke too soon. Jets of gas exploding outwards at 200,000 kilometers an hour. Blasting dust and gas out for millions of kilometers. It's unbelievably violent, but look at the results. It's beyond words. Nebula, vast glowing clouds of gas hanging in space. With no wind out here, they'll take thousands of years to disperse. They seem to be forming a vast stellar sculpture. It makes you realize nature is more than a scientist, an engineer. It's an artist on the grandest of scales. We've seen some strange sights, but this is a masterpiece. A giant horse's head rearing up in space. Stars are born grow up, and then, then what? Do they die? Do they slip quietly into the night, or go out with a bang? Somewhere between here and the edge of the universe lies the answer. Nearly 4,000 light years further, luminous clouds suspended in space encircling what was once a star like our own sun. All that's left of it are these brightly colored gases. Elements formed by nuclear fusion deep inside the star, released into space on its death. Green and violet, hydrogen and helium, the raw materials of the universe. Red and blue, nitrogen and oxygen, the building blocks of life on Earth. For us to live, stars like this had to die. The oxygen in our lungs, the nitrogen in our DNA. It was all produced by nuclear fusion in stars that died long before the Earth was even born. We are made of stellar nuclear waste. Our family tree begins here.